Hello everyone. Welcome to this new series where we will be learning Python specifically for machine learning. The goal of this series is to start from the basic. We will not assume any initial knowledge and we will cultivate the expertise needed so that we can run machine learning algorithms. We will mostly focus from the skills in Python, which we will need for machine learning jobs, such as data scientists, machine learning engineers, and many of variations of these jobs. Starting from the basics, we'll look into the notebooks. This will allow us to run code without installing anything on our machines. We will start building necessary Python capabilities such as the language syntax and how we can declare things, the data types and everything. We will look at some of the very key libraries such as NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-learn. I will also share sample codes as we go through the course, which you can play at your end. Finally, we will cultivate a solid foundation through this series so that you all can start from basics and learn on your own. As a first step, we will start with Colab Notebooks. Google Colab Notebooks are free for everyone to use. And let us look into the process next. What you can see here is a Google Colab Notebook. This is uh, the place where we will code and test and develop our models. Colab Notebooks are very easy to create. For your notebook to be created, you need to go to https colab.research.google.com. This is the link. You can open it in your browser here. I will open it by clicking on this URL. I will also share this notebook so you all can play at your end as well. Uh, I have created many other notebooks in my playtime, but in your case, if you don't never have used it, it will go let you to sign in through your Gmail ID and it will uh, create this empty page for you you will have to uh, click on create a new notebook. Once you do that, uh, it will open a simple notebook for you. You can name it as, uh, as you want it. I'm going to name it simple notebook. And naming can be done by clicking on uh, this icon on the top left. You see here, these things are called cells in uh, Scholar. I'm going to delete this cell and let us create a simple text cell. Uh, we will not worry much about many of the things which doesn't matter for machine learning as such. You can name this anything. My first text cell to test notebook. And once you have written it, just do shift enter or in MacBook shift return and it will kind of create a new cell for you. By default, it creates a coding cell. So you can create cell also by clicking on the top. Let us write uh, print. Hi. How are you guys doing? When the first time you run this cell, you can run this cell by clicking shift enter. And also there are options here where you can click to run after, run all and so on. For example, running all will run this cell again and all other cells as well. And this is the way you print anything in Python by writing print statement and intermediate text. So this is our simple hello world. If you have ever done a Java or C++ course, you would have seen that writing a hello world in Java and C++ is not as simple as Python. This is one of the reasons that Python is very popular. It has very simple, intuitive way to use the things and data scientists and ML community loves it for that. Coming back to our starting Colab notebook. Uh, this notebook I will also share, but you can start and practice along as we work on. Uh, Python is kind of very versatile language, which we will learn throughout, and it has very immense popularity in many fields. We will mostly focus on ML area, but it has a lot of uh, usability across development and in general across data manipulation community as well. Setting up Colab Notebook, as I discussed, can be done easily through Google Colab. You might have to sign into your Google account if you have not already logged into your Gmail. You can create a new uh, notebook. You can also upload an existing one, but for purpose of this course, we will create a new one. The syntax of the language is very simple. We already looked at the print hello world. Like after this cell, if I want to create a cell, you can click on code and it will create it. There are many uh, keyboard shortcuts, which we will not discuss here as they are not needed. And the, the other important parts other than say print is a function. Other important parts are like defining variables. So any in any language, we need three things actually. We need a way to define data, and then we need a way to manipulate data, which also 
you can consider such as process data, analyze data, and so on. And third thing is we need a way, for example, read, write data. Uh, data is kind of the way by which we define through use of variables, like you see here. And in general, they are called data types, which we'll look up next. Manipulation of the data is through many different operations, which we'll see. And reading, writing of data, we will also look into that, how you can read or write data through files and so on. Let us start with simple hello world, which you earlier looked into. If you write within print any text, it will come out. So hello world in the sense that your first text, which you printed through the language, you can define variables as well. Say, my text is text is equal to, I, I am doing awesome. If you write this text and you want to print this text through the language. Now, since this text is a variable which you assigned, you can print it by writing uh, your text. And if, if there is anything which you don't want to run in the code, you can comment it and commenting it's as simple as adding a hash in the front. So this is only doing, hi, I'm doing awesome. Like you see here, you can define variables to be integer. We can define them to be string. And then you have to take care of the indentation in Python. This is one of the important thing about Python that whenever we write different codes and syntaxes, you see there if starts and print starts later on. We will a little bit look into what this is doing, but let me define my X. Let us say X is equal to two. And now this is a conditional statement. We'll come to many of these again through proper way that what is the meaning of conditional statements and so on. But for purpose of this first notebook, conditional statement is going to check different conditions as its name suggests. So if say my X is less than three, like you see, when you write this syntax and you added in the Python, the conditional statement uh, kind of ends with this uh, operation. If you write it and press enter, it will automatically intend it. You will have to go backspace to again go back. But you see it is automatically intended properly. So this is one of the good thing about Jupyter Notebooks, which we are using in Colab, that automatically the syntax is taken care of. We want to print something. We want to say that x is less than three. Otherwise, now if you want to come to back, else, else has to come again the same level at if, we'll say print x is greater than three. Now, uh, as expected, since the x is two, it is less than three, the first part will be true. So else is not executed. When one of the if is true, else is not executed. It will print that x is less than three. Now, if we make x is five, it will print that x is greater than three. So else is executed now. As you also see, we can define uh, kind of this text inside print statement through double quotes like you see here or through single quote like you see here. So double and single quotes are both fine, but they have to be both open and closed uh, simultaneously. Like if you open a double quote, you have to close with a double quote and so on. Now, what are these variables which we are adding? So there are these variables are like many different data types which Python supports. Uh, these data types are the way for us to store data. Since we are going to play with the machine learning, machine learning indirectly means we have to play with data. And that's why we are learning different data types. We see an integer, but it's a floating point data type, string, list, dictionaries, booleans, and so on. For example, integer data types can be age, height can be a floating data type, name is a string, different grade points can be, again, integer or floating points, depending on how we interpret them. Uh, then there are more complex data types such as dictionaries, like you see here. A dictionary is properly, if we intend it properly, it's like more complex data type. It has keys and values. So any dictionary, we define it through dict, and actually it has keys and values. And we can uh, play with these keys and values. For example, this person has name key and value being Alice and age key and value being 30. Simply a student is a Boolean data type. Let us run this cell. Running this cell is again shift enter or shift return on, on your MacBook keyboard. Uh, let us see what this person is. 
when you want to print anything, you don't have to write print always. Uh, if you just write the name of the variable and enter, uh, Jupyter, this Colab will automatically print it for you. It's saying that it's a name and Alice. We, we can also say print only, uh, say person dot keys. It will show us that what are the keys in this dictionary? The keys are name and age. And similarly, the values can be shown. Another way to use these dictionaries uh, we will look into, but uh, dictionaries are a data types and dictionaries can be very large as well. And what, what is grades here? Grades is a list here. If we print grades, uh, we see that this, this data type is list. So in general, we have integer, floating point, strings, list, dictionaries, and Boolean. These are the data types which we'll use a lot. For any variable, if you want to see what is its data type, can I type and the name of it, and it will tell you what it is. It's saying that it's a list. Uh, and if you want to know what is this person, it will tell you it's a dictionary. Few things, a few differences which Python have with Java and C++. I'm telling that because C++ and Java, you will have to define the variable names and the data types and so on. Like you see here, we only put the variable names. Age, height, name are variables. And the right side side are the data which we will hold in them. We don't have to tell it's a list or dictionary because Python automatically will figure it out. For example, person is a dictionary, it will automatically figure it out and tell us and we can play with it, whatever we want to do. Let us now do a very simple exercise. Uh, for example, if you want to create a variable and assign it to 10, it's as easy as a is equal to 10. What if we want to create a b variable and assign it to 20, it's as easy as b is equal to 20. And if you finally go and write B here and shift enter, it will tell us B value is 20. It is same as doing print B, which will also tell us B is 20. Here we have created a list with three fruit names, such as apple, oranges, and bananas. We can directly print this list, for example, write it fruit and it will be apple, banana, and oranges. But there is another way also where we can pass through this list. Like you see here, we can write a for loop for this list. We will dive deep into these loops in the second lecture loops and conditional statements. But for here, I will just leave it for introduction purposes where the for loop will go through each element. For example, for each element in fruits, we want to print that element. You can do many things with that element. Currently, we are just seeing it for element and print element here for fruit and print fruit. So this name is what you want to give it. It can be anything for A in fruits, print A. It will still work. Uh, this concludes our first lecture. I hope you were able to run your few simple Python syntaxes. And you see, we didn't have to install anything, so it's so easy. I'm very excited about the next few contents which we'll talk about. And mostly we'll focus more on understanding the list and conditionals so that we can later dive deep quickly into the libraries and more fun stuff. And we can start building our machine learning models. I will see you soon in the second video.